Today, we're discussing Fortitude in Seven Days to Die Alpha 20. Now, we've got a lot of info to cover and no time to waste, so let's get to it. I think it is safe to say that in order to survive and thrive a zombie apocalypse, you definitely need fortitude. And Seven Days to Die agrees. It has an attribute called just that. So today we're going to take a look at the fortitude attribute and everything it has to offer. So let's start off by taking a look at the attribute itself. Fortitude is the measure of your physical resilience. As with the other attributes in Seven Days to Die, Fortitude has 10 levels. By maxing out the attribute itself, you will deal 300% headshot damage and have a 50% chance to dismember with fists and machine guns. By pumping points into Fortitude, you will also unlock the ability to buy perks. These perks are separated into three different sections. We have our combat perks, our survival perks, and the recovery perks. So let's take a look at these perks, starting with the combat perks. The first combat perk in the Fortitude attribute is the Brawler. Learn martial arts and use your fists to stun, knock down, disarm, and ragdoll your opponent. Now, if you're a fan of Savin's World, you already know how much I love punching the stupid zombie jerks in their stupid zombie faces. And in order to do that most effectively, you need to invest in the Brawler perk. This perk governs the knuckle weapons like the knuckle wraps, the iron knuckles, and steel knuckles. There are five levels to the Brawler perk, and each level will improve your damage, your chance to stun, knock down, and dismember the zombie jerks. So if you're looking to punch some zombies in their stupid faces, max this bad boy out and demonstrate your pugilistic prowess in the zombie apocalypse. Our next combat perk is Machine Gunner. Become a commando using assault rifles to slay your foes. Machine Gunner allows you to roam the zombie apocalypse as a post-apocalyptic Rambo. mowing down wave after wave of zombie jerks with your fully automatic machine gun. Like the pipe machine gun, the AK-47, the tactical assault rifle, and the M60. The machine gunner perk has five levels, and if you max this bad boy out, you'll be dealing 50% more damage, have a 25% faster fire rate, and a 30% faster reload speed. You also get access to Commando Adrenaline, which, once maxed out, will give you six stamina per shot score. That is awesome. It is just so satisfying mowing down those zombie jerks with fully automatic machine guns. But let's move on to the survival perks. First up in the survival section is the Huntsman. Specialize in hunting your prey and harvesting more meat, bone, and leather. Now this perk is pretty straightforward. The higher your Huntsman level, the more resources you will get when harvesting animals. There are five levels in the Huntsman perk, and maxing this bad boy out will double your animal harvest. This perk can really help out the food situation and resource gathering in seven days to die. Our next survival perk is Well Insulated. Specialize in using a combination of clothing and natural resilience to weather even the harshest of environments. Now real quick, I have a minor gripe that I kind of need to get out of the way here. The next section of text reads, you can now handle severe weather and typically could care less what the weather conditions are. Now this is a minor gripe, but it should say typically couldn't care less, meaning you're carrying level is at the lowest that it possibly could. So instead of saying could care less, it should say couldn't care less. I know it's a minor gripe. Grammar police here, but I had to point it out because it was bugging me. Anyway, enough moaning. Let's get on to the perk itself. Weather can be an issue. 
extreme cold and heat can drain your food and drink levels fast. The well-insulated perk has three levels, and if you max it out, you will never have the severe stages of temperature status effects, meaning you really do not have to pay too close attention to the biome that you're in. If you'd like, feel free to take a stroll through the snow biome in your undies. Now that is one sexy, sexy man. Next up on the list is living off the land. Specialize in harvesting more crops using your hands or a tool. If you plan on doing any farming in seven days to die, this perk is a must. There are three levels to living off the land and investing in this perk will open up seed crafting recipes as well as increase your harvest rate. By maxing this bad boy out, you will triple the amount of items you will harvest from wild or or planted crops. Now, if you'd like to check out a more detailed tutorial about farming in seven days to die, you can click the icon on the top right corner of the screen and check out my seven days to die farming tutorial. But let's move on to our last perk in the survival perk category, pain tolerance. Specialize in shrugging off blows, fighting through pain and staying in the fight when others would be down for the count. Let me show you little chick, take your mind off that pain. Pain tolerance is perhaps one of the most underrated perks in Seven Days to Die. It is a must-have for brawler builds. There are five levels of pain tolerance, and by maxing this bad boy out, you will reduce your HP loss by 25%, and perhaps even more importantly, you will never get stunned. So if you plan on getting up close and personal with the zombie jerks, it is almost a necessity to spec into pain tolerance. Do not overlook this perk. But now let's move on to the recovery perks. The first perk in the recovery section is healing factor. Specialize in boosting your natural healing rates as long as you're not starving. Self-healing will not work when you are out of food or water. This perk will speed up your natural healing. You'll regain health faster and your critical injuries will heal faster. There are five levels of healing factor and if you max this bad boy out you will gain one health every six seconds and your critical injuries will heal twice as fast however i must caution you that you have to maintain your food and drink levels if you do not stay fed and hydrated you will not be able to heal naturally so keep that in mind when taking healing factor but let's move on to our next recovery perk iron gut specialize in gastrointestinal health to use less calories and gain more benefits from food. Use less oxygen while diving. Iron gut is another often overlooked perk. However, it can be extremely beneficial. It reduces your food and water loss as well as your chance of getting dysentery from food and drink. But on top of these benefits, consumable buffs last longer. That is awesome. The iron gut perk has five levels and if you max this bad boy out, you'll get a 25% reduction in your food and drink loss, a 5% reduction in your dysentery chance, and your consumable buffs will last 50% longer. This makes your consumables even better. Don't sleep on this one, ladies and gentlemen. Iron Gut can be an extremely beneficial perk. And the last recovery perk in the Fortitude attribute is Rule 1 Cardio. Train your body in the number one tactic against the zombie menace, run running away from them. There is absolutely no shame in vacating the area. As the old saying goes, sometimes you need to live to fight another day. And with rule one cardio, you can run for days. There are three levels to this perk, and if you max this out, you will get a 30% increase to your stamina regen while sprinting. Just take a look at how far I could sprint continuously. Started at my home base, and I ran all the way down here 
here on one stamina bar. It is absolutely insane. Rule one cardio is definitely awesome. The fortitude attribute in seven days to die has excellent offensive as well as defensive capabilities. So if you love getting in the thick of things, fortitude may be the attribute for you. You can deal out some incredible damage by mowing the zombie jerks down with your automatic machine guns or by simply walking up to them and punching them in their stupid zombie faces. But not only can you deal incredible amounts of damage, you can take it as well. The defensive capabilities will keep you from quickly getting overwhelmed and becoming lunch for them zombie jerks. The fortitude attribute is awesome. But now I'd like to hear what you all think. Are you folks fans of the fortitude attribute? Let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning about some of the other attributes in seven days to die, I've created a very special playlist that you can access by clicking the box in the top right corner of the screen. But for now, this is Savin saying thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and we'll catch you in the next one.